Welcome back, iDoctor UK podcast. It's a really, really nice hot sunny day in Sheffield and we've got some really hot news straight off the press about two weeks ago talking about the Oregon right to repair law. I gently brushed on it last week about this uh, right to repair law that's been passed in Oregon. It was signed on March 28th of this year and it looks like it's, it's to stop parts Perry, but the main features require parts, tools and manuals for consumer electronics being available. The basic outline of it is that it requires uh, electronics manufacturers to provide repair manuals, parts and tools for consumer electronics to both product owners and independent repair facilities, which is, that, that's what we are, isn't it? So it's really interesting that this has happened in Oregon and I think there's some rules in California now. Obviously the difference in this Oregon one is that there's a, a ban on parts pairing which prevents manufacturers from using software to serialize device components, which is a method that restricts independents like us from repairing stuff without looking like idiots. It just makes us look amateur. Excuse me, sir. We're, I'm happy to replace the screen on your iPhone 13, but it will come up with a, a, a notification in settings to say screen's been replaced. It's, it's absolute baloney, isn't it? It just makes us look crap, right? It's, yeah, anyway. So I think that this is going to come into effect some point next year. But interestingly, that might put like the iPhone 15 and the iPhone 16, probably the iPhone 15 as maybe the last device that will come up with the, with the parts pairing problem. Would love to see what else it stops as well. Um, so like if you swap screens on iPads, for example, they can, even though there's no parts pairing notifications, there is noticeable differences between with pencil touch and i believe there's a chip on newer ipad displays that affects pencil touch so pretty good news really anyway so yeah that was the good news that we've had or what i've read about this week what i meant to talk about last week um which is pretty cool the next topic that i'm going to talk about is i think in it's sort of coming up to tech max 2024 which is really exciting um, we'll be there doing some recording, just showing off the event and stuff. Just, you know, just a, like a vlog style video, showing off what goes on there. It's a really cool event. The guy who runs it is a cool guy. And it's a great place for sort of meeting up with all the phone parts suppliers all hang out there, computer repair, computer building, all, all kinds of stuff related to uh, sort of tech industry, tech repair industry mainly, or tech like computer shops, phone shops, think, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so we'll meet up in one place and have a good chinwag, show off their latest stuff. Steve from Replace Base was there last year showing off some of the new W repair tools, what they'd got in, as well as their um, protection pro machine as well. And then there was Sanjay from TechPoint uh, with his machine, putting screen protectors on for everybody. So there was, there was a fair bit going on and it was a good excuse for a good drink as well. Although in recent months I have given up drinking, so maybe it won't be as fun this year. No, I'm joking. Of course it's going to be, it's going to be twice as fun because we don't drink. Oh, and because, yeah, the, the only one of us who drinks here is Alex, the cameraman, then he's going to drink double. So even if you don't go to look at the tech stuff, it'd be, probably be worth it to go and watch a drunken idiot. Tell me you're not sold. So yeah, that just about covers the, the two topics that I wanted to talk about today. Just look at the teleprompter, you have not, you can't even spell Oregon. You put Origo. <laughs> Origo, I'm going to go. Origo, Origo. Um, yeah, so we're just going to talk about some questions. We have actually had quite a lot of questions this week. I think we've had like an additional 200,000 views compared to last week on YouTube, which is mainly because we've been posting these shorts. I keep talking about it all the time, but we've had such good feedback from them that I'm going to go through some of the questions now and hopefully like, it just means that the channel might grow or some of these videos reach people who it might not have reached before so I'm super excited thank you everybody who's watched um, I, I genuinely appreciate it like it's sort of getting to that point now where it's like life-changing stuff is going on so it's really really exciting and I can't wait to see what happens next week week after and more next year whatever anyway Honest Abe 3100 said on the iPhone X battery replacement video, Sir, you're a gentleman and a scholar. 
how do you get those tiny screws to stick on your screwdriver to make them easy to glide into their socket? So I use a, what do you call it? It's a Vera or Vera, depends how you want to say it. So they make, um, they make tools for like say electricians, you know, like domestic or industrial electricians. Um, they're a very popular screwdriver brand amongst that trade. Anyway, they make a, a magnetizer and demagnetizer. It's like a little star shaped magnet. Rub the screwdriver across it and it magnetizes or demagnetizes your magnet. The only ones are sometimes you'll find that like screws around cameras don't ever come off or stick to the thing easy. And Samsung screws, they just always get caught. Um, but apart from that, get yourself a magnetizer. I'll try and put a link in the description below. Moving on to the next question on a iPhone 11, oh, another battery replacement video, sorry. Uh, Breaker666 asked another quick question. I didn't see your first one, I'll be honest, sorry. Can you use white spirit or mineral spirit instead of isopropyl alcohol? My honest answer is that I do not know the answer to that. I've never tried any other methods. I think it's more important, like, the alcohol softens the adhesive. It like just, I always call it like retards the adhesive a little bit. So it just stops it from being sticky essentially. But that's only temporarily as well with, um, with alcohol. Once the alcohol evaporates, it'll be sticky again. I don't know if white spirit does the same thing White spirit or mineral spirit isn't uh, conductive, so it would be safe to use around electronics. It just depends whether it would work. I have in the past accidentally put acetone underneath, but of course we already, already know what happens with plastics and acetone. It sort of melts it uh, and, and don't recommend using acetone anyway. So my honest answer is I don't know. If you see this video, please let me know if it works. I would love to know if it works. Moving on. Easy repair on an iPad. So this was a short... Uh, and somebody said that it's like Dr. Pimple Popper, Pop, I can't even say that word, Pimple Popper for robots. I think Dr. Pimple Popper's the guy who pops spots, isn't he? Um, so maybe they're saying that they find it satisfying. Thank you for commenting. Uh, and then somebody else has com made a comparison on the same video. Uh, remember the old game operation? We now know what the kids who won do for a living. I like that. That's good. Yeah, that's very good. That's, yeah. I wasn't ever, ever any good at operation. We got a dinosaur version of it from uh, from a museum in London. I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, we got a dinosaur version of it and it's Natural History Museum and it's good. It's got dinosaur bones, what you have to take out, obviously. Great game. iPhone 15 Pro Max screen replacement tutorial. John Carr, 3458. I knew, I knew you'd be here somewhere, John. Thanks as always for commenting. Um, how much for that screen? and what number exacto blade so we'll start off with by building some suspense where do i buy mine from i think in the video I was, oh are you on about the exacto blades uh aliexpress for them i think it's a number 4a exacto blade now the part for that iphone 15 pro max you better sit down guys it was expensive i think i had to lay out 385 quid or 375 quid and then when I send the part back, which is still dossing about in here somewhere, I think you got 40 quid back for it or something like that. So £333, I think it were. Expensive, that's what they are. Very, very expensive. Um, so yeah, it's an expensive repair. I wouldn't recommend breaking your 15 Pro Max if you own one. iPhone 7 Plus charging pl port replacement video. Katy Charo 7958 said, I just completed my swap. Yay! I bought a couple of cheap dead phones off eBay and practiced several times. The videos that show removing the logic board and all the other components at the top of the phone were overwhelming. I've swapped the battery before and that was easy in comparison. Anyway, your slip it under the logic board method is genius, pure genius actually. I agree, I agree. Honestly, there is a risk and I think I talk about the risk. You just don't lift it up too much. You just need to pull it underneath. There is a risk that you could damage the logic board by lifting it up too much or causing bend damage uh, or sort of trace damage. But just be careful and it works. It works really well. I think that's all the questions for today. I think I've covered all the things that I wanted to talk about. The last thing that I want to talk about is the Samsung A14 and the A14 5G. There's about a million different versions of that. And I've got every, other, every time we get one of those in for repair, then I have every version but the one what it is, and I, I don't I don't know why how, how it goes wrong every time. Maybe there's just really one really common version 
that goes out of stock all the time. So I'll buy all the other versions and we've just got them sat here and then we just repair the other one. I think that's the most likely situation. But the 146P is, seems to be popular for us, I think. Um, whereas the 146B sounds like a P, but it's easy to get mixed up, isn't it? Anyway, everybody have a great day. Have a great week. I will see you in episode 14 in the future.